Hello and welcome to recording of a presentation I was fortunate enough to give here in Melbourne in 2018 at the Accountech Live Expo. My name is Rhys Bennett and I have spent the last few years with Waypoint on the front lines of getting people into their new systems. Whether that's training, process consulting, change management, I seem to have done it all. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of Waypoint before, we're a cloud integrator. Now, what's a cloud integrator, you may ask? Well, essentially our job is to help companies become more efficient. Now, we do that by implementing and getting the most out of cloud software solutions. In the accounting world, cloud integrators typically help accountants like yourself integrate your clients' inventory and practice management apps with the likes of Xero and QuickBooks. Nifty, right? So with hundreds of projects under our belt, we feel we've learned a thing or two about how to implement software the right way. But what I want to talk to you about today isn't rocket science. It isn't even that technical. It's a set of fundamental rules I've come to learn that makes the difference between running a successful software implementation or wasting time and money on something that simply doesn't work. So, I present to you Dana Miller's Formula for Change. A formula invented in the 60s, ironically revised in the 80s, to capture the exact components of successful change. It's amazing, complicated, and something I'm not going to be going through today. It's just a tad bit dry and a little bit boring. And this isn't one of those kind of presentations, so be warned. Instead, I want to present to you a much simpler formula. What we hear as Waypoint see is the three elements of a successful project. So, what are they? Preparation, dedication, and collaboration. I'm going to take you through each aspect of these three elements and how with even a single one missing, you're setting yourself up for failure. So, let's start where any good or bad project begins. Preparation. Or the rule of organize, don't agonize. How easily us humans can rush into a complex scenario under the energy of blind enthusiasm, only to end up no better off because of it. Now don't get us wrong, we love enthusiasm. It's a positive and infectious attitude, but it needs to be channeled. Preparation starts with knowing what you need, and it starts with rock solid requirements. Every building needs a solid foundation, and a new system isn't any different. This means taking the time to really explore what you need from your new system. What does it need to do? How does it need to perform? Who's going to be using it? Think of your requirements as the destination you want to get to. Only when your requirements are met will you know you've completed your journey. This is about knowing your needs clearly so you can make smart decisions on which technology is actually right for you. Because hunting for apps and platforms without identifying your needs is all too common. It's natural. Too often, people get caught up in the buzz of great platform marketing and start moving towards a new system, only to find it doesn't cater for a mission-critical process all too late. We're not going to lie, though. Gathering and documenting requirements is hard. Scratch that, it's, it's just bloody boring. But if you want to give yourself a fighting chance of creating something that works for your business, it's essential. But how you go about gathering these requirements is almost as important as the list itself. You need to have a unified vision. If you're not the person who's going to be using the system each day, go seek them out. Involve the people that are affected by the system. I, I, I can't repeat this enough. Speaking to the right people is critical. Find out what slows them down. What annoys them? What stops them from enjoying the work that they actually do? Making these things key requirements as important as all those reports that management are after is key. Because it's dangerous and frankly foolish to build requirements from people who don't have the context. This isn't about theory or assumptions. It's about getting as practical and as real as possible. If you're only making 20% of your staff's lives better, you can't really expect everyone to be on board. Now, creating a unified vision can sometimes feel like herding cats. For every valuable piece of input, you may be receiving twice as many irrelevant critiques. But by identifying both relevant and irrelevant together, 
you're only going to make those requirements of yours stronger. And please, don't just listen. You need to show action. If decisions are made to exclude certain requirements, make sure you feed that back to the people who put them forward in the first place. Nothing quite kills the mood of a new system launch like the question, hey, where's that thing I asked for? Take the time to clean up your act. Don't work with dirty data. It's like moving house. That third drawer down full of rubber bands, receipts, and five boxes of IKEA tea lights, it doesn't need to come with you. To put it another way, a great chef only cooks with the freshest ingredients. So should you. It's also about making sure you're set up for success. Building your system around bad data is just bad for business. Because moving systems is the perfect time to review your data and make changes for the future. It's the opportunity to get your data in a healthier state. That might mean consolidating your data, adding new fields to support new requirements, and getting rid of that data that nobody actually uses. But most importantly, it's a time to find those errors and discrepancies. Get rid of those ghouls and ghosts that have been haunting your data. Don't move forward with the skeletons still in your closet. Now is the only responsible time to do so. So what happens if you have everything in place, but you omit the appropriate amount of preparation your project deserves? Well, you end up in NASA's shoes. Now, normally a great pair of shoes to be in, if I'm perfectly honest. A highly dedicated team who make fine details their business. That is until you have NASA's 1999 Mars Orbiter mission, which use a combination of initial calculations and imperial measurements alongside their metric best practice. By the time the project was in full swing and the, pro the probe had left our orbit, those imperial measurements were long considered metric, and the Mars Orbiter and its $125 million budget were left to fly off into the vast emptiness of space. Don't build your project on dodgy estimations and calculations. So you've done all the prep in the world. Well done. Now what? The reckless thing to do would be to start chipping away at it where and when you find the time. You can't do that. You need to dedicate yourself. You need to understand that without a plan in place, you have no project. And with that plan, you need to dedicate the time and resources any project demands. You need to respect the process and appreciate that things take time. If you're the business owner, you've got to ask yourself, is your time best used running the business or growing the business? Don't try to fit these things in. Respect the commitment a new system requires. Don't find the time, make the time. Commit those hours in the day, block them out of your schedule, and protect that time. If you don't commit the time, the project will either fail or be delayed again and again and again. It has to be a priority. And remember, if you, as the business leader, can't find the time, don't be surprised if those around you don't either. It sets the wrong tone if you're not dedicating the time to make it happen. Lead by example. Now, we're not naive though. If you're running an operation where you can't afford to offer your time, you need to be asking for help. Who around you can take the reins and commit that time? Because spend all the money you want in the world, it won't help you. Time is the only finite resource. Understand that as you start exploring and implementing a new system, you're going to run into options and capabilities that are above and beyond your list of requirements. Don't get caught in the weeds. Don't go chasing the next shiny thing. Stay focused, stay dedicated to your plan. If you've done things right, you have a list of requirements. You need to be measuring all newly acquired possibilities against those requirements. There's no harm with putting the nice to haves at the end of the list, even if it's a second phase to the project, but you need to appreciate what they are, nice to haves. I was once advised when buying out our first home, live in it first, then knock down some walls. You need to get to know the new before you can start making those fundamental further changes. Because as soon as you start trying to squeeze in all those nice to haves, you're forced to compromise in the very time you've dedicated. Don't shoehorn, postpone. What the hell did we just build? Now this is a question you can only afford to ask once before you've gone live. If you're asking this Monday morning as the system is in the hot little hands of the entire company, then you're in for a fun week. Test your system, test it thoroughly, and test it with the right people.
There's a tendency to build and test a system based on the perfect day's process. That doesn't really exist. You need to ensure it can deal with the curveballs, push it to some limits, and largely ensure it can deal with the real complexities of your actual day-to-day -day process. Get a chance to see how staff are going with using the system. Ensure you're not moving forward with people feeling confused and left behind. Because you owe it to yourself and your staff to ensure that the wheels fall off while you're still in the workshop. Measure twice, cut once. So, what happens when you've prepared until the cows come home, but you fail to dedicate yourself to the implementation? What happens when you take shortcuts and don't test expectations against reality? Well, let's go back to the 50s and the advent of commercial airlines. These new aircrafts could carry more people at faster speeds and at greater heights than had ever been travelled before. Now, you may wonder why you always see curved windows on planes these days. This is why. You see, these planes were originally produced with square windows, a shortcut and an oversight. Those simple four corners, those harsh right angles, they created a magnitude of stress points all throughout the fuselage, stress points that were never tested under those new speeds and air pressures. Unfortunately, it was a total of 56 passengers that found out this fatal error before the engineers. Your business probably doesn't have anyone's lives at risk, touch wood, but it does have their livelihood. Dedicate yourself to protecting that. So, number three, collaboration. Let's talk about it. This is the point where companies often learn the hard way that without adapting to people, you're never gonna gain adoption. And you'll end up failing at the worst possible point of a project, at the end, after all that precious budget has dried up. Now we need to talk about something, something horrible and something that few of us are really any good at, change. Change shouldn't be hard, but as we've all learned in our personal lives that even change for the right reasons isn't any easier. Right here is where most projects are doomed to fail, bloody change management. This is where a business realizes that regardless of the quality of the platform, the level of preparation and the efficiency of the project, its fate is always tied to the people that have to use it at the end of the day. As they say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It's your job to make them thirsty. Identify the bad eggs, the old dogs, the people that you know are going to have the hardest time of change. Give them more attention. Make sure you're giving them a reason to want, and if you can, need to use the new system. Because trust me, it only takes one bad egg to ruin the omelette. While some will rejoice in saying goodbye to an endless amount of Excel spreadsheets, paperwork, etc., others might feel frustrated because they've lost some freedom, flexibility, company culture. To ensure there's widespread adoption of the new system, make sure the wins and enhancements more than outweigh any perceived losses. As accountants and bookkeepers in the cloud space, I'm sure you've all dealt with people that are holding on to platforms and processes 15 years or so of age with white knuckles, afraid of moving forward. You need to keep these people involved, maintain that unified vision, and make sure the end user's priorities and requirements are the same as the businesses. And remember, one size just doesn't fit all. The system might well be designed for everyone, but not everyone is going to naturally feel the same about it. But when you're setting those expectations, do yourself the favor and make sure you're delivering on them. We know getting buy-in is important, but don't oversell and overpromise a solution just to get people on board. Remember that a system can only do so much. It can improve your efficiency and help you solve real business problems, but it's not a silver bullet. It's not Skynet. It's not some AI that... It's going to do all the work for you. It's only ever as strong as the people that operate it. Remember that. Be realistic. Don't hide shortcomings or sacrifices. Take the time to get people on board with the choices you've made and the reasons behind them. And ensure that you only have happy surprises in store for your staff, and not nasty ones. Now, this is a big one for me. Don't suffer in silence. Speak out. Ask for help when and where you need it. This is just so... Now, this is a big one for me. Don't suffer in silence. Speak out. Ask for help when and where you need it. This is so very important to us at Waypoint. 
so important that we actually have a term for it. One that I feel I can only share because our English founder is currently overseas, if I'm perfectly honest. <laughs> Don't be British. Now, we're not being rude. I'm perhaps being a bit cheeky. But what I mean by this is, if you're too polite, proud, or ashamed to ask for help, then you're bound to suffer. A squeaky door gets fixed. Encourage everyone involved in the project to be as brutally honest as they need to be. Because having these frank conversations within your team really is the only way. If you're working with an implementation partner like ourselves, make sure you're communicating honestly, brutally if possible. If you're not communicating, providing honest feedback, then you're setting yourself up to fail. Because being direct doesn't mean you're being rude. We won't take offence. In fact, we'll more than likely applaud you. But some things you need to understand can't be solved in isolation and can only be solved in collaboration. So, I wonder what happens if you have world-class preparation, complete dedication, but don't collaborate on that simple human level. Well, you have Starbucks. With over 25,000 locations worldwide, Starbucks has a proven model for bringing America's idea of good coffee to every corner of the world. With a store opening every 15 hours in China alone, they obviously know what they're doing. That is until Australians come into the picture. Everything on paper looked perfect for Starbucks' expansion into Australia to be yet another success. Huge percentage of coffee drinkers per capita, disposable income coming out of our ears, and minimal competition from established franchises. The only thing missing was our appetite. Now we're in Melbourne. We know a few things about great coffee. Let's look at this here. Starbucks took America by storm because, let's be honest, they didn't know any better. We do. We've had an established espresso culture for a long, long time, and it means something very different to what America's grab-and-go takeaway mentality is. By failing to acknowledge people in the equation, Starbucks have admitted defeat in Australia with a closure of 70% of their stores. Only 30-odd remain nationwide. And it's not that hard. Take McDonald's, for example, another efficient monster mega brand. Every nation they enter, they take that standard McDonald's menu and they attune it to a nation's cuisine and taste and culture. They bring other palates in right next to the Big Mac. And it works. It's not that hard. You need to understand that you can have all the plans in the world, but without collaborating with people, you screwed. So, prepare, dedicate, and collaborate. Do all three, do them well, and you're bound to not only have a successful implementation, but I believe a stronger solution in the end. But before I let you go, I kind of want to bring this home with one of Waypoint's core company messages. You see, for us, these four words They're more than a tagline. They're our core business philosophy. We get labelled as a technology business, but it never really works. Yeah, tech is smart and it can do remarkable things, but you need to drive it with even smarter process. I want you to do what we do. Take a process first approach and then find the right technology to fit the process. Because selecting the system, app, or software before you've nailed your own process is a huge mistake, and one that we just see repeated all too often. In our experience, any time you start with the technology, you have to make a compromise. And we don't think it should be like that. I want you to walk away from today, and I want you to forget platforms, throw out systems, ignore apps. All that stuff, it actually means very little in the success or failure of bringing them into a business. I want you to... Keep remembering people. Flawed, biased, often lazy people. It's remembering people, how they work, how they think, that you'll not only be able to implement a system, but you'll be able to get those people genuinely embracing it. Forget platforms. Remember people. Thank you very much.